This is the day that the Lord hath made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. Hello, friends, and welcome to Making Progress. This is the broadcast ministry of the Progression Church, and I am your host, Romel Williams. We are a local work with a global witness. We are physically located in the heart of the city of Chicago in the Roseland community, and we are committed to helping you progress. We want to see you progress through exposure to God, through the explanation of his plans for your life, through the experience of his gifts, which are within you, and through the expansion of his kingdom in this world. It is our hope that you will connect, that you will partner, and that you will join with us for your good, for our growth, and for God's glory. So please tune in to our broadcast each week for a life-changing experience. And remember, friends, progression is the way forward and the way up. Glory to your name, Father. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. We've come to give praise to our God. Anybody here to give praise? Come on, if you're at home, prepare yourself to worship. Wherever you are, clap your hands with us. Because God deserves our honor and our praise this morning. Come on, we're going to sing it. You sing it after me. Say this. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. You're always making a way. Always making a way. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're worthy. Say. Lord, you're worthy. And we give you, and we give you the praise. Lord, you worthy. Lord, you're worthy. We came to give you. And we give you the you're praise. always making a way. Always making a way. And we give you the and praise. And we give you the praise. Lord, we were worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And we give you. And we give you the now praise. come on, clap your hands with us. Come on, if you're in agreement, put those hands together this morning. As we give him praise and honor. I hear you, Lord, you're awesome. And we give you, everybody, always making a way. Always making a way. And we give you. And we give you the praise. You are awesome, Lord. Lord, you're awesome. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're faithful. And we came to give you. And we give you the praise. You are faithful. Lord, you're faithful. We came to give you. And we give you the praise. You're And we give, call him faithful, and we give you, always making a way, always making a way, always making a way, and we give you, you are faithful, and we give you, come on, say faithful. Faithful, and we give you, and we give you the praise. 
faithful, faithful, and we give you. You are faithful, faithful, and we give you. You are faithful, faithful, and we give you. Said you're faithful, 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 faithful. You are the faithful, faithful. Yes, you are faithful, 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 faithful. Say that you're worthy, 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 worthy. Jesus, 
the Progression Church. We are so thankful that we have safely crossed over. God in his faithfulness has spared our lives and decided to bring us out of 2020 and into 2021. Because of that, our theme this year is taken from Acts chapter 28, verse 15. We are thanking God and taking courage. We are thanking God for his faithfulness to us in the past, and we are taking courage for the future that he has already preordained for us. I am so excited about what this year will hold for us, and I want to challenge us that progression is the way forward and the way up. So in 2021, we are forward focused and upward bound. God bless you. And remember, this year, we are thanking God and taking courage. Just worship him. Hallelujah. We give it to you this morning. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. Yeah. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Say, my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, sing it to him this morning. My hallelujah. My hallelujah it belongs, belongs to you. Yes, it does. Oh, 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 my, it belongs to you, all of the glory, God, my hallelujah, it belongs to you, yeah, yeah, say, you deserve it, oh, God, you do, yeah, you're worthy of his praise. Oh, yeah, you deserve it. You deserve it. Oh, oh, all of the glory, say. All of the glory belongs hey. to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the glory belongs. All of the glory it belongs, belongs to you. Yeah. To yeah. Oh, 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 all of the glory. All of the glory. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. You. All of the glory, all of the glory, it belongs, belongs to you. To yeah. Tell them, you deserve it. You deserve it. That's all you gotta say. You deserve. You deserve it. It's yours, oh God. You deserve it. Oh yeah. You deserve it. Tell them again, you deserve you it. Everything you've done for you me, you deserve it. Oh, for every way you made you me, deserve I gotta give you the glory.
provide a way for you me. You keep providing for you me. So you deserve my praise. My hallelujah belongs to you Every day, God My hallelujah belongs to you If you believe that, sing that with us Say, my hallelujah belongs to you It's yours, it's yours, it's yours it belongs to you. Yeah. No music, just your voices. My heart say. It's yours, oh God. Hmm. Somebody lift your hands while you say, say. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yeah, yeah. Say all of the glory. Say. Oh, all of the glory. Come on, Lily, they'll lift it to him. All of the glory. Say. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Mm -hmm. Belongs, belongs to you. Belongs to you. Belongs to you. Tell them it belongs. Belongs to you. My praise. Belongs to you. Hey. My adoration. Belongs my hallelujah to you. all of the glory belongs, belongs to you. Huh. it's yours oh god belongs to you belongs belongs to you lift it up to him belongs to you praise is yours yeah, belongs to you Mm, it belongs. belongs to you. Mm, belongs to you. Belongs to you. Belongs to you. All of the glory shown. Belongs to you. All of my heart belongs to you. Belongs to you. All of my heart belongs to you, Lord. 
somebody pledge your heart again this morning. All of my heart belongs to you. My mind belongs to you. My mind belongs to you. Oh, hey, hey, belong. Hey, all of the glory belongs. belongs to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Belongs it's to all you. yours, Jehovah. It's Jehovah, it's all yours. It belongs to you, oh God. Belongs belongs to my praise, my glory. It belongs to you. Say, belongs to you. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Somebody pour out your worship on him this morning. Pour out your worship on the most high. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All of the glory belongs to you. Hallelujah, we give you praise. Hallelujah, we give you glory. Hallelujah, we give you honor. Jehovah, we lift you now, God. We lift you now, God. We give you all of the glory. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. You deserve all the honor. It's yours. You deserve our hallelujahs. It's yours. You deserve our adoration. It's yours. You deserve all the praise. It's yours. It belongs to you. Hallelujah. It belongs to you, hallelujah. It belongs to you. Oh, Jesus, it belongs to you. Yeah, yeah, it belongs to you. It belongs to, to you. This is the day that the Lord hath made, we should rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Welcome to the live broadcast of the Lilydale Progressive Baptist Church. We are the Progression Church. We are located at 10706 Michigan Avenue here in Chicago, Illinois, 60628. We are so grateful that you have taken out of your schedule to join our live stream or to be marked present for our live worship experience. Even now, we ask that you would like, that you would share, that you would begin to comment and interact as we prepare to hear the word of God together. Amen. Uh, I'm excited to be here this morning. Uh, grateful to semi-return from my vacation, amen, uh, and to continue together with you today our study of the book of Acts, Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 26. Acts chapter 3 
verses 1 through 26. Here's how my Bible reads. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man, lame from birth, was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate, to ask alms of those entering the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by his right hand and raised him up and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong and leaping up he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them walking and leaping and praising God and all of the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple asking for alms, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astounded, ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Why do you stare at us? as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy One and the Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead, to this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance and did also as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ should suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send the Christ appointed for you Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for the restoring of all things about which God spoke by the mouth of the holy prophets long ago. Moses said, the Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. You shall listen to him in whatever he tells you. And it shall be that every soul who does not listen to the prophet, to that prophet, shall be destroyed from the people. And all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and those who came after him also proclaim these days, you are the sons of the prophets. And of the covenant that God made with your father, saying to Abraham, and in your offspring shall all of the families of the earth be blessed. God, having raised up his servant, sent him to you first to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. 
Once again, in your hearing for emphasis, verse number six says this, but Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I need to label the message this morning, I recommend Jesus. I recommend Jesus. Silver and gold, have I none. But what I have, I want to give you today. In the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I recommend Jesus. I remember it, Robert, like it was yesterday. Even though it was over 20 years ago, I arrived at Moody Bible Institute one morning for class. It was Founders Week. And the campus was buzzing with alumni and various Christian groups, all looking for trained ministry workers and opportunities to expand their footprint in the evangelical world. As I exited the parking garage, I noticed a white van with a black and blue logo on it. The six point star in the middle of the logo caught my attention, and when I read the wording, this is what it said, Jews for Jesus. I must admit that this caught me off guard, but I quickly inquired and found out they were a Christian movement based in San Francisco and founded by a Baptist minister of the Hebrew Christian uh, origin. It was founded in 1970 and incorporated in 1973. And despite their chosen designation, this group is not accepted or respected as a Jewish organization by the Jewish authorities. This group promotes messianic Judaism, a Christian movement. They believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of God. And unlike mainstream Judaism, which either views Jesus as a good teacher or a strictly false prophet, they see him as the Christ of God. Jews for Jesus may have been founded in the 70s but it was fueled by the history that Luke the physician has laid out for us in the book of Acts. To be clear, the apostles and the foundational members of the early church were all Jews for Jesus. This, brothers and sisters, is the very bedrock of Peter's sermon in chapter 3 and the reality that must shape our appreciation for the salvation that we enjoy. God chose Israel. Israel failed God. Israel, God sent Jesus. Israel rejected God in Christ, but their failure was all a part of God's plan. The opening chapters of the book of Acts read like three installments in the same movie franchise. In movie one, Christ ascends and they wait for the Holy Spirit. In movie two, the Spirit descends, Christ is proclaimed, and the church grows exponentially. But as we consider this third installment, we see the Holy Spirit at work in the lives of the apostles using the miraculous to provide another platform for preaching. You will notice that Luke tells us 
in Acts 2, 43, that all came upon every soul and many signs and wonders were done through the apostles. After giving us that information, he now gives us a bird's eye view of an occasion where one of these miraculous signs takes place. He says that Peter and John were headed up to the temple at the hour of prayer. They were headed to pray in keeping with their Jewish traditions in the early days of the church. They're headed to pray at the three o'clock hour and there is a cripple who is daily carried to the gate of the temple. I want you to see this man. He's broken in a beautiful place. He's sitting there lame from his mother's womb and he has become so professional at begging that he no longer looks at the people who he's asking for money. He sees Peter and John going into the temple. Now, I need to pause to tell you that Jews thought it to be particularly pious to give to the needy. And so here he is in the perfect place to beg at the gate to the temple. Please understand that the law forbid him from entering worship because he was broken. I'll get back to that in a minute. Listen, he's as close to worship as he can get sitting outside the gate begging for money. Peter and John walk up. He hands out his cup, makes his little speech, and never lifts his head to see who he's begging. Peter and John both look at him. Peter says, look at us, man. And when he looks, the Bible says he's expecting to receive something. But he, they look at him and Peter says, I don't have what you're asking for. Silver and gold, have I none? But what I have, I'm about to give you. Here it is. I don't have what you want, but I do have what you need. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, I want you to hear this. He doesn't just speak healing. He participates in it. He grabs the lame man by his right hand. I ain't got time to work on the right hand, but he grabs him by his right hand. He lifts him up, and, and Luke, who is a doctor, uses deliberate language to talk about the fact that limbs that had never worked got strength they had never had so that the lame man leaps up. He's trying his legs for the first time. And he begins walking and leaping and praising God. I want you to get this because it's easy to miss the magnitude of the miracle when you don't understand that he wasn't just broken. He was banned. You, you got to get this. On the same day, he gets healed and he gets access. He'd never been past the gate. But because he got what he needed that day, he's now further in than he's ever been, closer to the altar than he'd ever been. And he's jumping and leaping and praising God. This text is interesting. It says something powerful. It says he clung to Peter and John. This, in the original language, this, this is an idea akin to how 
the police grab you when you under arrest. He, he, he didn't know what was going on with him. He just knew that his legs that had never worked were working now. So he clings to Peter and John, and as they walk into the temple precincts, the people begin to realize that's him. Many of us, in fact, all of us who walked in this morning, walked by him. He was crippled the last time we saw it. But now he's standing on his own. He's leaping on his own. He's praising. So they begin to gather around Peter and John. Peter notices what's going on. And the Holy Spirit makes it clear to Peter it's preaching time. Peter says, men of Israel, why are you looking at us like we're the ones behind this healing? That there's no power in us. There's no piety in us that could have made this broken man whole. But let me tell you who did it. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. The God of our fathers who sent his servant Jesus. It is this Jesus who is responsible for healing this man. He says, and I don't want y'all to forget what happened with Jesus. He should have been freed. But at the request of you and those who are in authority over you, you all freed a criminal so that you could kill a king. He says, but it's by the power in his name, by faith in him and faith in his name that the one who died, who was the author of life, get that, that ought to shout you, how does the author of life die? Because when you're the source of life, and you got control of life. You can lay life down and pick it up again. He says the author of life died, but God raised him from the dead. We are his witnesses, and I want you to be clear that this man is standing in front of you completely healed because of the power that is exclusively available in the one you reject. Turns the corner now to say to these people that what they need to do is acknowledge that they acted in ignorance, but that their ignorance was conditioned, watch this, by a premeditated choice. Someone has rightly observed that real ignorance is ignoring available information. And can I tell you that's exactly what the Jews had done over and over again. God had spoken by the mouth of the prophets and he had promised that Christ would suffer. And he says, that suffering has been fulfilled. He's literally saying to them, the very thing that you're trying to use to discredit the fact that he was the Messiah is the proof that he is who he said he was. But watch this call now. He says, repent, turn back, make a 180, change your mind and change your direction. Repent, therefore, and turn back so that your sins may be blotted out. Can I hang out here for a minute and just preach the picture? This idea of blotting out had to do with record keeping in antiquity. Things were written on animal skin. 
but because of the nature of the material where stuff was written, if you got something wet that could break up the ink, you could take that sponge or that paper, wipe it across the animal skin, and it would become as if nothing was ever there. He says that the way you erase documents is what God in Christ has done for us and our sin record. He has wiped it away with his blood and blotted it out. says that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of God and that he may send Christ appointed for you, Jesus. This speaks to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom uh, heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God himself spoke through the mouths of the prophets long ago. Peter is making the case that even though you can claim ignorance, you are not absolved in the part you play. You all are guilty of being active in the conspiracy that got Jesus killed. Hello, family, partners, and friends. My name is Lashika Hunter. Thank you for joining us this week for our Making Progress broadcast. Please consider connecting with us, partnering with us, or becoming a member of our church family. Follow the prompts on your screen, and please know that we are committed to helping you progress. Now, back to today's message with Pastor Williams. Then he presses it further. He says to him, Moses, the one you revere, whose law you are determined to keep, spoke in Deuteronomy 18 about the fact that God was going to raise up the prophet, definite article, from among your brothers and that whoever didn't listen to him was going to be destroyed. He says, listen, you, you walking around revering the Torah. But every time you turn, the Torah is pointing you back to the Lord. He calls Samuel's name. And he says, Samuel and all the prophets spoke to you about Jesus. Why does he call Samuel's name? Because Samuel is considered the first prophet, the first official prophet. He says, from Samuel forward. Every one of your prophets keeps on speaking about Jesus. And you also need to understand that it goes back further than that. He takes them beyond Deuteronomy 18 all the way back to Genesis 22. When God tells Abraham that through your offspring, both singular and plural, all of the nations of the earth will be blessed. Listen, he, he's, he's offering them a peace treaty, but he's conditioned it by telling them, you are guilty as charged. He says, God raised up his servant, and he sent him to you first to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. That's the story today. He says, listen, you got a choice to make. He says, this man has been healed, but we didn't do it. He says, but I'll explain that to you, and then I'll offer you this exhortation. Once you know who Jesus is, you have no other choice but to repent and turn to him. Turn away from your wickedness and turn to him for deliverance. I want to tell you today, church, that this text says to us that Jesus is able to meet all our needs because he is the fulfillment of everything God has promised. Oh, I like the way that sounds. I want to play it for you again. Jesus is able to meet all of our needs because he is the fulfillment 
of everything that God has promised. Question on the table today that I want to ask and answer is simply this. Why should the church now still recommend Jesus based on what he did for the church then? I, I think that's a worthy sermonic question. I want to answer it from this text and then I'll get in my seat. I want to tell you first of all that I recommend Jesus for your transformation. Come on in the room with me. Only Jesus can provide physical transformation for the broken. This lame man didn't need a doctor. He needed a healer. This lame man didn't need a surgeon. He needed limbs that had never functioned to get strength from the one who made them. And I want you to get this because this is what's critical about this text. Luke is deliberate to talk about the fact that this man is leaping. And Luke's deliberation in speaking about this lame man leaping is designed to point us backwards to Isaiah 35 verse number 6. As the messianic age is prophetically forecast, he says that the lame shall leap like the harp. The lame shall be jumping around like the deer that this lame man's healing is more than a miracle. It is a sign that the messianic age has come to fruition. He says, listen, when you see somebody who has never walked jumping and leaping and praising God, it is proof that the Messiah has come and he is doing what only he can do. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but somebody's sick, somebody's broken, somebody's lame in some area of your life, and I want to recommend Jesus. Oh, he's the one that's able to make stuff that's never worked work like it's supposed to. He's the one that is able to fix what the doctors have given up on. He's the one that is able to put power in stuff that's never been strong. I recommend Jesus. I don't know what you're dealing with, but I recommend Jesus. I don't know if the doctor said it's cancer, but I recommend Jesus. I don't know if it's heart failure or heart sickness, but I recommend Jesus. I, I don't know what the details of your physical illness may be, but I recommend Jesus. Let me tell you why I recommend him. Because he made you, he can fix you. Come on in the room with me. I ought to have some folk in the room that's been healed and you can testify. The doctor said it don't make sense, but I realize it was Jesus. Help me preach and tell somebody. I recommend Jesus. I'm almost done. Y'all bear with me. Lord, hold me. Hold me. Let me finish this last part. Listen, I, I recommend Jesus for, for your transformation. But then let me tell you secondly and finally, I recommend Jesus for your reformation. 
You see, on the one hand, only Jesus can provide physical transformation for the broken. Let me tell you why else I recommend it. Because only Jesus can provide spiritual reformation for the guilty. I know, I know. I messed the sermon up for some of y'all. But for those of us that are saved and honest, let me speak since I got the mic. You don't want nobody to know, but you did it. You lied, you cheated, you stole, you overate, you indulged in your worldly passions. You are guilty. But the good news is this, only Jesus has the power to reform the guilty. Look what he says. He does this by way of two things. I'm almost done. He says, listen, I, I need, first of all, to do some explanation en route to doing some exhortation. He says, y'all looking at us like we're to blame for this man who's jumping and leaping and praising God. He said, it wasn't us. And I want you to get this. The worst thing a servant can do is take credit for the master's authority. I learned this lesson in a real and relevant way several years ago from my cousin who's seated to my right. Reverend Kevin Stovall preached a sermon one day and the Lord met us. He moved in that service and we began to celebrate Kevin for how well he preached. And he looked at us and said, it wasn't me. We said, well, well, Kev, who was it that preached? He said, listen, it wasn't me. I said, who was it? He said, it was the son of God. Can I tell you that what Kevin did that day is exactly what Peter did on this day. He said, listen, I'm not taking the master's credit. All I am is a witness of what he's able to do. Y'all killed him. But God raised him from the dead. And there's so much power in his person. That a lame man woke up this morning in the same condition that he came forth from his mother's wound in. But now he's standing here praising God because that's who raised him up. He gives an explanation. But then he gives an exhortation. Listen, there's no need in hearing the gospel if you're not going to respond. He says, you need to repent. You need to turn back to God. Turn away from your wickedness. Turn away from your self-sufficiency. Turn away from your evil practices. And he says, when you do, there will be forgiveness. But then he says, there will be refresh." Meant. Can, can I pause there for a second to tell you that one of the benefits of being a repentant person who has accepted the gospel is that God knows how to refresh your life. We, we should be happy about that, but we're not. So let me put it in context. We've been living for the past 14 or 15 months in a global pandemic. Is it anybody other than me that went through times where you felt dry, where you felt parched, where you felt discouraged, but you can testify that some kind of way when you thought about the gospel again, when you overthunk what God in Christ has done for you, you experienced refreshment. says, listen, if you, if you turn back to God, if you repent, there will be refreshment. There will be forgiveness. But then he says, 
there's going to be visitation. I want to make sure you got this. It might be plausible to ignore Jesus if he wasn't coming back. But since he is, and since you're going to have to give an account for the deeds that you've done in your body, you can't ignore him. He says, listen, he's going to send Jesus. He says, right now, y'all can't find him, but we know where he is. He's hanging out in heaven. Heaven has received him until it's time for him to come back and restore all things. I need to pause long enough to say to you that what Peter is doing is heavy lifting. He is speaking to the prophesied hard reset that is built in to redemption. Because God in Christ didn't just show up to fix us. He showed up to fix it. Come on in the room with me. He's going to fix creation so that everything that sin messed up will be restored. Now he says, what are you going to do with Jesus? says, listen, he's quoting from Isaiah's servant songs. Then he moves down to Moses and the prophets. Finally, to Abraham and the promise. And he said all this to say, I recommend Jesus because even though you're guilty, he ain't trying to destroy you. He's trying to bless you. You don't know when to get happy in church. So let me bring it a little closer. I told you you're guilty. But the fact of the matter is this. No one should be able to mute your praise because you should be dead already and unable to pray. Your presence is proof that mercy prevailed. What is mercy? It's God not giving us what we deserve. Come on in the room with me. I thought enough wrong yesterday not to make it to the pulpit this morning. But isn't it good news that this same Jesus that we rejected is still standing there with open arms trying to bless us. I got to close this thing, but listen, I recommend Jesus for all of your needs. Whether you need healing or you need help, the answer is available in him. Come on in the room, saints. Whatever it is, whoever you are, I recommend Jesus. I recommend Jesus for your way with children. I recommend Jesus for your broken marriage. I recommend Jesus for your evil boss. I recommend Jesus for your hellish family members. I recommend Jesus for your social concerns. I recommend Jesus for your political anxiety. I recommend Jesus for a city where over 30 people have been shot just because it's warm outside. If the Lord can't fix it, then it can't be fixed. I wish you'd get it this morning so I can sit down. I recommend Jesus for all of your needs. Not close with a little song from Milton Brunson. They used to sing in the church of my nativity. It simply said this, if you got a problem in your life, take it to Jesus. It seems like nothing ever turns out right, 
but take it to Jesus. You see, I tried him for myself and I don't need nobody else. Jesus can make everything all right. He will make it all right. Is there anybody in the room that can testify? He will make it all right. He'll pick you up. He'll turn you around. He'll give you joy in your heart. Peace in your mind. He'll put purpose over your life. He will make a way out of no way. So try Jesus and you'll find out that he's more than enough. He will heal your body. He will forgive your sin. He will fight your battles. He will fix your trouble. He will use you for his glory. I recommend Jesus. I don't know what you're dealing with, but I stopped by long enough to tell somebody that I recommend Jesus. Jesus is his name every day the same yesterday today and forevermore Jesus is his name power in his name power in his name yesterday Today and forevermore, power in his name, healing in his name, healing in his name, yesterday, today and forevermore, there's healing in his name. Yes! Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. We pray that you are blessed and encouraged by the word and worship that has gone forth. If you are watching this video and you are interested in placing your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, or you're interested in being baptized or being a member of our global fellowship, all you have to do is click on the link featured in the description section of this video. Upon completion of that form, a member from our staff will contact you and lead you further into your relationship with Christ and your relationship with the Progression Church. We pray that you are already making plans to attend our online campus again next week for worship. And please remember that progression is the way forward and it is the way up. Have a blessed one. It is giving time. It's that time in our worship experience where you can partner with us in ministry. This is your opportunity to be a blessing to us as we have been a blessing to you. We want to ask you to join us in serving God and his people by partnering with us locally, nationally, and globally to share the good news of Jesus Christ. As you can see here on your screen, there are four ways to give. You can give by mailing in your gift. You can give 
by texting to give or through the GiveLify app, or you can give online at our church website. Again, you see the four ways to give here, and we are so grateful to the Lord for you partnering with us in ministry. Before we pray, let's recite together our giver's confession. Where there is a temple, there is a need. Where there is a need, there is provision. Where there is provision, there is God. Where there is God, he shall supply in miraculous ways. And my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful and thankful to you for the givers as well as the gifts. We pray, God, they'd both be used for the edifying of your people and for the glory of your kingdom. This we pray in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. God bless you and thank you for your generous gift. Please remember, progression is the way forward and the way up. Thank you so much for joining us. We know that you were blessed by the word and the worship. Please make plans to join us again. Until then, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, God bless you.